uh, I think that the department is, you know, already receiving feedback, which will determine at some point whether or not Smarter Balance and uh, this testing program is actually on track and doing what it's supposed to be doing. Thank you. Yes. I have a, a fundamental question, I think. Um, it seems to me that, um, that this is trying to, to take away all of the work that was to develop. But they want to add all of the extensive work that was done in developing um, the Smart Balance Assessment. Um, starting way back at the level of public hearings, and there are tons of public hearings, and I'm wondering what it will accomplish for us to retread the same ground, um, and particularly to have public hearings, um, if, if we don't have these assessments, what's the public going to comment on? You know, they'll be commenting on um, some perhaps misinterpretation of what this test is and what it does because we won't have any real experience with, with the test and the impact on students, the impact on, on teachers. Um, I, I just can't see why we haven't done sufficient good work to date on both the Common Core and the assessments that we can't, uh, that we have to adopt this bill in its entirety, whether the amendment makes it better or not, I just don't understand what the motivation is for. Well, no, I, I agree with you. Um, I, out of courtesy, I was going to allow it to um, be brought to the full committee, but my recommendation right from the beginning is to deem 1432 ITL. But um, I don't know. The, committee, the subcommittee has to take this bill to the committee with a recommendation. Yeah. We, should, we need to vote on whether we want to um, ITL or pass it with one of the two amendments that we're talking about. Madam Chair, can, yes. I, can I make this observation though? And um, it is often the case that on important bills, the public and others do not become part of the formal process. It is, I think, our job to address the concerns and try to educate the folks, if you can say the word educate, or address the concerns. And, and although we can always argue people should have been involved sooner. I, this is not unusual uh, for people not to get excited, I guess is a good word, about something until it's, it's confronting them. And, and I, I would like to think that perhaps we could at least now look at Representative Ladd's amendment which would still allow some of this to go forward, but I think not prevent the testing. If we could shift to that now, it would mm -hmm. be a good comment. Now, I, I do have one comment to make, though. I do not want us to start mixing apples and oranges here. Mm -hmm. Common Core is really like we got what we want our children to know and be able to do, the knowledge and skills. We're talking about how we're going to assess right. their reaching out and grabbing these objectives or these goals, whatever you want to call them, the, the, what they have to be able to know and do. So I, I've not read in this amendment where there's any criticism of the Common Core standard. I'm reading into this where there is question regarding how we're going to measure with the smarter balanced right. instrument. And I think that's a legitimate question. Um, the only question I had on, on Representative Murtaki's bill was there that I, I, I was a little confused on the one or more alternative, some of the tests, whether we're talking one or more alternative.
statewide some of the some of the tests. You know, I don't want the the. I know that the federal government probably has a number of tests which can can measure uh, accomplishment, um, and school districts have access to that same thing. Are we going to cherry pick and allow one? You know, are, are we going to? act as a state when we're reporting our data. Certainly I can understand high school may be doing SAT, but I can see if we're going to continue to measure, which I'm really not really for doing every grade level three through eight, and then uh, uh, I think that's a lot of testing. Uh, maybe we need to do it separately, but you know, that could be done by way of another instrument than SAT. Uh, but and report that data, I think we'd be okay with the feds. So uh, I don't have a problem with, with the, the, the concept of where he's coming from on this. In fact, it's it's separate from the common core. It, 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 even though it measures you know, that, it, it's, it's talking assessment here. Representative Brad, I'm looking at um, section three, um, because I, I was concerned about the same thing. And section three does not seems to be going to the common core rather than just the domestic. Yeah, that, that, that speaks a little bit broader than right. just the smart about. I'd like to suggest that before we decide about uh, this amendment that we consider um, representative lads in the room. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and, and also though, before we go, um, you know, if we address some of the specifics, and, and I agree with three, that is polluting more the common core than the assessment, that could be easily fixed. But I, I think because there is so much public concern, whether it should have been earlier or not, I, I'm reluctant to just ITL this and go on. And, and I, so let's look at representative plans. There is also, even if the committee um, votes three to two or uh, four to one or whatever to ITL 1432, there is nothing that stops either of the representatives from submitting an amendment to the full committee this afternoon that may address some of the questions that we had in discussion, just not not accepting, because um, as as it stands, I'm I would be willing to allow you know uh, uh, the I, I don't have to allow it. It's procedure. If they want to bring an amendment uh, with changes and and addressing some of the issues that we discussed. Um, that can be brought forward to the full committee. As long as the ITL vote would, uh, um, doesn't go on the first ballot or whatever. If, unless there's still a lot of discussion that the, uh, the amendments can be uh, brought back. You'll have to scamper to get it yeah. to the OLS so, before one o'clock. Yeah. All right, uh, let's discuss uh, Representative Ladd's. Uh, I'll pass this around because th this is the amendment as. Um, is it not from one to me? <coughs> and there's been some modification to it, but we'll work off that original sheet. <coughs> the objective of this amendment was to address the issue of smarter balance and the statewide assessment process that we have. It, it, it intentionally leaves out the issue of the Common Core and competency-based testing. Uh, competency testing was used in the high school for those courses at that level. Um, I'll read it uh, as, as it is and then show you where there's some possible changes to it, if you, if you don't mind. Uh, then you get the understanding. Uh, in, in section one, it says statewide improvement assessment, delay in implementation of smarter balance assessment, notwithstanding RSA 193C, the smarter balance assessment plan for the spring 
2014-15 school year for grades 3 through 8 and grade 11 as referenced in the New Hampshire Common Core Standards Implementation Framework, July 23, 2012, shall not be implemented or administered until 2016-17 school year. The Department of Education, in coordination with the United States the Department of Education, shall do just what the other bill had originally said. Now, here's where it changes. New Hampshire Department of Education study of Smarter Balance Assessments. The Department of Education shall conduct a study of the Smarter Balance Assessment for grades 3 through 8 and grade 11 and shall review and make recommendations regarding the statewide summative assessment program for public schools. The study shall a. determine whether the Smarter Balance Assessment fulfills the aims, assessment tasks, criteria, and generates data for the established goals of the statewide educational improvement and assessment program pursuant to RSA 193C3. Those are the four components that we have underneath our purpose and established goals of our program. B, review the statewide education improvement and assessment program required under RSA 193C to determine how and by what indicator all academic areas identified in RSA 193C5, <coughs> including but not limited to reading and language arts, mathematics, science, history, geography, civics, and economics are assessed. That's also in statute right now. Uh, C, determine if the annual statewide summative assessment process is pedagogically appropriate, cost effective, and if the statewide summative assessment process and increased classroom instructional time can be realized through another grade level assessment system and testing configuration for use in levels such as grade 4, 6, 8, and 11. Determine if the Smarter Balance Assessment is designed and aligned with New Hampshire's content-specific concepts, skills, and knowledge standards, and ensure that no portion of the Smarter Balance Assessment includes questions designed to determine or measure student disposition. E. Determine if a statewide education improvement and assessment system such as the Smarter Balance Assessment will provide data including student achievement data and student growth data used to inform determinations related to school effectiveness, individual principal and teacher effectiveness for purposes of evaluation, principal and teacher professional development and support needs, and teaching, learning, and program improvement. And F, review privacy concerns. This is just an extrapolation right out of the original bill, this portion right there. And G, identify funding requirements and fiscal impacts associated with initial implementation and subsequent annual costs associated with statewide education assessments. The department shall make recommendations as to whether or not costs, costs constitute a mandated program under Part 1, Article 28A of the New Hampshire Constitution for the purposes of the statewide obligation to municipalities supporting local school districts. And Roman 2, the department shall issue a report of findings and recommendations for proposed legislation to the Speaker of the House of Representatives, President of the Senate, House Clerk, Senate Clerk, Governor, and State Library on or before December 1, 2014. The dates haven't been changed from the original bill. Now that's how I, I wrote it. Now there are some changes that I, you know, I'm suggesting for your consideration here that really change it quite a bit in, in, in a lot of respects. The concern I have is that how do we remain in compliance with the waiver with reporting some kind of, the, the, what I've written, it just plain delays everything for several years here. The, the change would be on line 10, uh, 9 and 10, where it says delay in implementation and smarter balance assessment notwithstanding RSA 193C, that would be scratched. It would read the Smarter Balance Assessment Plan for the spring of 2014-15 school year for grades 3 through 8 and grade 11, then scratching that next part, shall not be implemented or administered beyond the 2015-16 school year or until such time that the study report required in Section 2 of this bill has been approved by the Legislative Oversight Committee established in RSA 193C7. And um, on line 29, it would take out the words assessment system and say grade level testing configuration. And on page 2, on line 2, it said determine how a statewide education, not if, how. 
though that's what I have suggested, I'm tr I was trying to look at the concerns that I, as an individual, as an educator, have regarding smarter balance and the implementation of an instrument that we don't have all the answers on right now. I know there's been studies, and I'm not questioning that, but I think it's, uh, it's very difficult to slam an instrument like this in on schools without gradually implementing it properly. Um, I know if you put it into the high school, you're going to have high school kids taking it, didn't have the benefit of the Common Core Standard, uh, grades 3 through 8, or K through 8. Um, we're, we're going to obviously see some uh, a test measuring something that perhaps they haven't had. Um, that's not what we should be doing with our assessment instruments. Um, that's a concern. I know school districts, I'm talking to my own superintendent, he acknowledges that we're, he wants to go forward with this. He recognizes there will probably be a significant drop in, in results. He's hoping there won't be, but there most likely will be. Um, there are issues in regards to how the this data may be used. We've heard in testimony from groups like the AFD regarding is this going to be used as an evaluation tool of my performance. Uh, I'd like to have some clear, specific answers on that. We have put into law last year where we don't like the word dispositions, we like the word work study habits. And I want to ensure that this test in no way will provide that information, dispositions back to and start circulating around. I, uh, we made it loud and clear that that's not acceptable to this house or the state. Um, so I, I do have some questions regarding where we're going with testing. I recognize we have a need for testing, but I am also an educator who believes we test too much. And we are testing to the point where yes, kids need to learn how to take a test, and you can learn things from a test. You have to be test wise. But to be doing it in grades three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if you've been an elementary teacher or an elementary principal, you know this is a part of the year you just dread. Um, this test, according to what I hear from the New Hampshire DOE, is going to take less time than a kneecap would or a cat would or some other instrument, it's less time. And I'd like to see a test which is also going to be meaningful to the teacher that you can take that data and use it for instructional purposes to better your performance as a teacher, but also learn what a child has learned and what you can do to help that child learn um, and, and get the high stakes business out of this testing and, and uh, rely more upon the judgment of the person that has the ticket in the room, the teacher. And I know that I'm quite concerned over some of the writing analysis and the information I'm reading about it and the elementary grades where a computer is doing the evaluation. So somebody's entered in the data which is going to make the decisions, uh, establish the rubric and the matrix and all that. <coughs> it, and uh, there's no, nobody reading it. It's a machine reading it. I have concerns where we're going. And I think we need to do a total overhaul, a look, a review of not just Smarter Balance, but of our statewide testing system. That's what this bill right here, this amendment would do. Could I ask a question? Yes. Madam Chair. Uh, Representative, in line 19, where we talk about the cost, it's on the second page. Um, we talk about, in general, the fiscal impacts associated with the initial implementation. I assume we're talking about the new test, the smart balance. Is is this supposed to be as compared to what, we're, what school districts are? Because they're already spending time and money on testing. So is it the intent to say as compared to, for instance, no child left behind or present uh, cost of doing the state statewide assessment? We heard this testimony from people that cost is an issue. We do know that the kneecap is totally paid for by the state and the federal government. Um, we do know what the expected costs are as associated with Smarter Balance, whether it's a writing assessment of 15 plus dollars or if it's uh, the computerized version, which is more. Um, but it's under 30. But my and we're spending 29 right now. But my question is, when we start talking about the cost, we already have those costs, and they're not considered a mandate. I haven't heard clear costs. 
I haven't heard that information. There's a lot of hidden costs, a lot of training, a lot of, uh, of, of services, technology that have to be hooked up. Those are all costs associated with if you're going to get into the business of computerized testing here in another several years. They all contribute. We don't have those costs. I heard that there's some schools that don't have the broadband or the width to, to, to do this. That's a concern to me. Um, some of these costs may be born. I read in Education Week the other day where the E-rate uh, Commerce Department is looking at putting another $2 billion in the E-rate, which would help schools be able to acquire the broadband. However, um, we're not all there. And I think to just roll into this so quickly when we know, in fact, all the schools aren't there, and some initiated the Common Core three years ago, but some are just getting into that realm right now. And we're looking at... Uh, if I knew that the State Department didn't have to have New Hampshire, didn't have to have one re reporting figure, uh, NCE score, because you don't, re a percentile you can't average, but the NCE you can, and reporting that data to the feds, if we didn't have that, I'd be all for a delay, flat out delay right now, because I don't know what this is going to gain us, other than a lot of hardship on the part of educators and teachers and parents until we get it right. So, I'm, I'm really perplexed on this whole business. I don't like the uh, the, the part, uh, the section one uh, where the smarter balance is put on hold uh, beyond the 2015 school year or until September. That part of it I feel is um, restricting and possibly illegal or will not help us in our with our uh, waiver and our agreements with the federal no, government. That's why the, the, the changed language was introduced. Right, but I was wondering if maybe a just asking for, even though I honestly feel well, you all know how I feel about the whole thing, but, and I have questions too, but uh, I think if we want to ask the Department of Education to do this study without restrictions that, you know, they can't implement the test beyond the 2015 school year and give them a little extra time instead of just up to, I, I'm sure they're going to do this anyway. But if it makes people feel better that the, the, that the state legislature is going to ask them to do this study and report the study rather than have the study just be on their website or whatever, report the study back to the legislature and include these points about the study, I don't think that would be such a bad um, directive from the legislature because I think we're overstepping our bounds by asking them to not implement or administer beyond the 2015 school year because a lot of these things are things that are ongoing and can and will resolve themselves as the test is administered. The money part of it, I'm sure uh, that when the, the department finds an area that possibly needs help financially to get the broadband going or to get more computers, you can go to the business community and begin, DOE can go to the business community and ask them to help um, with some of the districts that may be having difficulty uh, implementing the technology or things like that. But I don't I don't like it tied into saying, okay, after 2015-16, can't use smart balance until we've resolved all these issues. Well, until such time they've issued their report, and their report's supposed to come back by December 1, 14. And that how can you really make a true assessment in from June to December of all of these things that I think are ongoing issues that may take a year or so 
to actually surface or to, you know, it's very difficult sometimes to even get information back from districts as to, you know, what their needs are, what they're doing. They even testified that uh, some of the reports that were sent out a year ago, only 70% have, have sent the reports back. So by asking them to have a report in this depth by December 14th, though I agree that a lot of this stuff should be studied, <coughs> I think they're doing, uh, which I think they will have reports that can be obtained on this stuff as we go along. Delaying this implementation after 2015 and 16 uh, or such time that the report is done seems to me like a stumbling block that is unnecessary uh, in the general progression of the uh, um, uh, implementation of the testing. There was a report done in Michigan right here. They gave them two months to get it done. They got it done quickly. Um, I, I think that um, you're, we're giving two years here through FY16 to complete uh, this re the report we say, yeah, for, uh, December 1, 2014. That date may be too soon. That could be extended. But they can continue using Smarter Balance for two, two terms right here, 15 and 16. However, they can't go any further than that, according to this language right here, or until such time that that report has been submitted to the Legislative Oversight Committee and approved. So that we're also not just looking at smarter balance, we're looking at our statewide assessment program as well in terms of what should be the configuration levels of testing. Do we want to uh, continue doing what we somehow have locked ourselves in in recent years to every elementary grade? Or do we go back the way we once did things and things were a little bit more at ease in the schools, teachers were under less pressure, um, um, to always teach to this test, and not that everybody is. I, I, I like to think that we have some very professional educators in the buildings, which we do. And I'd like to know, too, are we going to be using this as a standard to evaluate teachers? If we are, I can't support going in smarter balance at all. I think there's a lot of different ways in a teacher's evaluated, based upon their contract, based upon what they're doing in the classroom. Their classes, sometimes I had schools with six different fourth grades in it. And we always knew that there was always one or two teachers that had kids which were superlative, and then we tried to sprinkle as best we could in other classrooms, but you had some teachers who really had the hard show, but they're excellent teachers in dealing with kids which had yeah. issues, and they made a lot of gains. But their scores didn't reflect what maybe mm -hmm. some of the, the kids in the other rooms did, but they're excellent teachers. That's, yes. If, if we were to extend the date to December of 2015, now your, your, your amendment, which I don't have before me, but I'm remembering from hearing she has it, would allow two years of implementation, and then we would have the report. So if it was December of 2015, we're still allowing 2015 and 16. So that would seem FY. Like FY. Fiscal year, you know, I understand. Um, so if we extended it to 2015, would that give us enough time to get the report and make it uh, You know, I, I, I've just worked on dates which were given here. I think that we have DOE with Heather here. Um, I, I, in my talking with them briefly here, and she's not speaking on behalf of the whole department, obviously you can't do that until you talk, and talk to your boss. But a lot of this is underway right now. They're looking at configuration levels. They're trying to determine how we assess all those subjects the statewide assessment and information implementation process addresses. We just are addressing two of them right now, English language arts and reading. There are other subjects which we have that are important subjects to be taught. Um, there's a, a, some issues here which I think need, are justifiably need to be addressed. They are trying to do that, but they don't have to report that. So, this is directing to do it. A follow up? And yes. It, um, since we're going to have to be executing this very soon, um, would it be 
possible for you to get an updated amendment in time for us to receive it in committee? 12.30, the boss just walked in the door. Uh, maybe if we can run it over to Anthony and get something done quickly, yeah. If we get this one on in the afternoon. <coughs> All right, we need to make a decision about the amendments. And um, well, Madam Chair, we could, we could ITL the original, but then in committee, if we were to get the amendments, then we could adopt the amendments. But the key thing here is we kind of run it out of time. So we come, we're going to have to I, I know, but I think I it's where the, I think as we're moving forward here, uh, Representative Ladd's amendment seems to be the most reasonable, even though I don't agree with it um, completely. Um, Maybe we should spare Representative Hotaki so I can see I, I would agree on that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That, that would be great. Then we can um, let's um, let's do that then. We can Well can we have some guidance then? You know, one All right. Let's say yes. That, that there will be no delay. The smarter balance will move forward, but there's a drop dead date <coughs> unless there's a report that's issued and approved. You can work with DOE, hopefully between them. Well, no. The, the changes I've not. The DOE seen all those changes okay. which have been suggested. But I still differences between. Representative Hawkins and mine, this is saying delay right now, bench. I'm saying go ahead for two, but then bench. I wouldn't be able to support delay for right off because I think we'd be in trouble. So the, your idea is more amenable for me. That is, continue and then get the report. So, um, I'm sorry. No. Are you, so you're saying we should administer the test, and and the study is going on while the testing is going on, and then we get the report, which will actually be looking at the experience of the test while it's in action. Is that correct? Yeah, the, the testing would go on and uh, in the start right now, and that's FY15, right? The report, we didn't really get a closure on the date. The date said December 1, 2014. But if you give us more of a lengthy time there through the spring, and maybe say by you know the mid year in, in, in uh, 2015, what would it be? Um, 50, it would be in 15 then that a report would come back to the DOE. But the testing could go on through FY16, so to do the 15, 16 school year. So we're te you're proposing that we test something, that we evaluate something that is not even underway. I'm concerned that if we don't have something, we're going to we're not going to be in compliance with our waiver. That's my concern. Yes. I haven't said anything about this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> unusual, maybe. I have a concern about the bill and all the amendments. We're really being too micro. We're trying to tell and codify how DOE is going to approach the issues of, of testing. And I, I think it's too specific, and it's something we shouldn't be doing. We, I think we have a legitimate right to rely on DOE to evaluate testing, to set standards, and, and to deal with the problems as they come up, rather than trying to, to codify this. So that's, that's, my, that's my observation. I think we're, we're going too far and being too specific. We're not touching standards. 
I understand that. But we're really getting involved in the very specifics of proposed testing and the merits and telling D how we're really telling DOT how to do its job. Yeah. In my sense. I think I'm trying to get clarification. There's some issues yeah, some in there which we've heard okay. from testimony. Uh, don't, Are these results going to be used to evaluate a teacher? But I and and you know, I know where you're coming from and, and and I understand that. And and I agree with uh, what Representative Schmidt is saying. We, we, the Department of Education, a lot of, two of these are already in statute. So they're already doing a couple of these things as it is. Well, can I ask a question then? If you're saying that, show me the test results on economics and geography and history. We're not doing it. And it's in statute we're supposed to be doing it. So how's our statewide program going to address those subjects? Do either one of you have something to, to, you know, to, so that we can help clarify this a little bit? Because I'm, I'm having difficulty. Uh, first of all, I, I know one thing, we need to change the title. Because it's saying delaying implementation of the state life. That's got to change. I, I, requiring the Department of Education to study the statewide assessment process uh, makes more, you know, that if you want to do a bill like that, I, I don't know. What, you're already doing that, aren't you? Uh, the, a lot of the, um, the points that Representative Ladd has put in is, is something that we, we do on an ongoing basis anyway. This certainly um, crosses the work that we're going to do in the development of our next waiver. So a lot of this work we're going to be um, dealing and, and assisting and, and so can certainly provide any kind of information to the legislative committee as, as you described it. But, um, if, if, a, a, uh, if a school district or, or a legislative committee or anything wanted that type of information or, uh, and wanted to know what, what type of, of uh, studies have been done on it and what information has already been gathered, <coughs> you have that material available, don't you? And if we didn't, we would find a way to help to deal with that. Madam Chair, could I yes. ask a question, though? Um, thank you. I know you're probably getting tired of getting our questions. No, no. At least the intent of Representative Ladd's amendment would not hurt the process that you indicated, would it? Not if I understand, and I apologize, we think we would like to reserve the right to see the actual amendment once it's completed, um, but from what Representative Ladd talked to us about, if we could continue the process that we're down and what we're looking for is just more information, then no, we don't feel like it would, it, it certainly would take time to put a report together away from the other things that we're doing, but it's important to provide Madam information. Chair, so, <coughs> in this issue of clarification, given all of the testimony and all that we've dealt with from the public. For clarification, this would not hurt what you do. It wouldn't change what you do. It would require this study to essentially, I guess the word is, clarify what our standards are, not just for the smarter balance, but for other testing. This, the only, oh, sorry. Yeah, we'll go the only thing that, that would cause me pause is that the we would put a report together based on the different bullets that are provided in the amendment and then we would pre present that to Delcar for for approval and we talked about the term um, what approval means we don't know what the result not, Jal not Jalcar. I'm, I'm sorry I'm sorry the, um, oversight. legislative oversight right? I'm sorry <laughs> um, what what the result of that would be I don't know if that would be harmful but just presenting the information, putting the information together, none of that sounds harmful on the front end from what we've, from what we've heard. Correct. I don't know if that's helpful. No. The Legislative Oversight Committee would be doing just what, for this, exactly what they did for the standards. The standards, before they can go to JELCAR, have to come to the Legislative Oversight Committee, which is chaired by Senator Stiles. And she and committee, which I'm a member of that, we looked at those standards, and there was, there was a lot of input given from our committee as well as from the hearings. 
and the department took those recommendations, and then that's what eventually went to jail time. So it's a process which we have in place, and a process that does work. Madam Chair, um, Representative Lab in Morataki can bring an amendment anyways. I think our discussion here was the clarification as to what we would think is <laughs> the least undesirable or, or the <coughs> most, I don't know what how to word it, but if we could at least give them that guidance and because the committee will ultimately decide whether it's what to do because I think the bill in its present form, we can act on an ITL anyways and be done with this because we do have another bill to do. I, I have a hard time understanding that this bill is really ready for prime time. I think it's more, this is more, uh, this is more a review of testing in general and it's not a, a really there's, there's it just puzzles me because I'm having a hard time to figure out how this is going to benefit anything. I, I think it you know these this ongoing work that's listed in here, um, if we want to, to say that the New Hampshire Department of Education study of smarter balance assessment, but as you go on in this, there's a lot more that's being asked. Um, privacy concerns. Um, it, it's asking about um, school effectiveness, in, uh, teacher effectiveness, teacher assessments. All of this goes way beyond um, the Smarter Balance Assessment. Well, Madam Chair, if I may on that point, that was a concern that I think raised our hackles last year. And knowing that any kind of assessment tool may be used to evaluate teachers. And that's new as a result of this waiver process which we've gotten on board with. No Child Left Behind did not have that included, but the waiver, that was a condition, and that's what got us, you know, tackles up, and we came back and said, no, that's responsibility of the local school board to evaluate teachers, and, and so we wrote it into our law. I've heard, though, that, you know, you always hear people talking about this, and it still hasn't disappeared, this language, it, People are still saying that's going to be used, the possibility of this test will be used to evaluate the performance, not just of the school or the students, but of the people that are working in the schools as well in terms of their effectiveness. I don't have a problem with any test being a contributor, but you know, I'm a little concerned about how much it's used for. So I think that's a very legitimate concern. It's part of the waiver process. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to ITL the original bill. I would second the motion, Madam Chair. Sure. And I don't have any more discussion left. But we've aired this. Grenier and. Uh, no. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone have any comments? I do. I, I, I think that there's some things which have to be done. There were too many questions that were raised in hearings to say flat out we're going to ITL it. Now, I don't agree with the bill as it originally came from. I couldn't agree with the competencies bit. I can't agree with some of the Common Core. I believe Common Core is where we need to go. The bar has to be raised. I don't agree with everything that Smarter Balance is saying. Balance is saying and what it's doing and how we're implementing it. And I think this is a process here which allows that to go forward, but it also allows for some questions that we've heard to be studied by the department and respond back to the channels that we have in place already. But we can adopt these amendments as they are at this point. Well, well, we could have that rewritten to, to do yeah, it. So by the time this afternoon, yeah, I hope. That, I'd be more satisfactory to see, a, you know, to approve the bill as amended and get the amendment in place that we're talking about right here. 
that but there has to be some there's changes that you can I make. understand that. That's so we can't accept that you have in front of you, Madam Chair. We went through that with the bill that we did the other day where we changed some wording in it and we sent it we voted on it and then we sent it down there and then when Representative Frazier went down to pick up the uh, uh, the amendment, uh, they wouldn't make the changes in it. Anthony made these changes for us. So you'll have to submit, resubmit. Uh, and, uh, but we're going to, it's coming out of committee ITL, uh, the vote anyway. And I'm going to take that vote now. All in favor? Aye. Four. Opposed? All right, and that closes the hearing for now on 1432. And we have one more. We have. Uh